Good eye. We're the testicles of one Jeremy Kasanis. You're probably wondering why we ain't attached to the body of Big Jezza. Well, it's because he's proven to King Ross that he clearly doesn't have any use for us. Because he's asked that sexual wank pheasant to ask his girlfriend, the delectable Joanna Tsui, or Chewy as she's more commonly known, the biggest question of his life on his behalf. Hiya, Joanna. The bollockless Jeremy has asked me to ask you whether you would marry him. Seriously, will you marry Jeremy? If you say yes, Jeremy has promised that he'll grab two of each animal and head for the bastard border with you. If you say no, he has said that he will push his fingers into his eyes. What do you say? Yes, that is actually real. Jeremy has approached this sexual wang pheasant to ask his girlfriend on behalf of him to marry him. His real life girlfriend, his beautiful, delectable girlfriend, who is far more than I expected from any of you dirty marks because she isn't blown up. So I, we wait with bated breath, don't we? Here are all the WTF moments from WWE Raw. So since we've kicked off with a couple of sweaty marks from Australia who might be engaged right now, who knows? Find out next time. It's only right that we deal with the rest of the marks who are in Philadelphia for WWE Raw. All of these marks, including my queen and yours, the delectable Felicia Rose, who had a sign that was really dirty. That there was actual dirt on it. WTF. Who would Adam and Eve and I, these marks in Philly that love Millie? Ha ha, no, yes, ha <laughs> ha, includes Tyson Kidd, as you can see up there. So the opening to the entire show, you know, the then, now, forever thing was interrupted with spooky Undertaker things, sights of graves and bongs, not... Not those type of bongs, you know, bongs, them type of bongs. They all appeared intermittently in that then, now, forever thing at the start of the show. Is this supposed to be creepy? I just don't get it at all. All Undertaker has shown this sexual wang pheasant there is that he sort of mastered Windows Movie Maker. If he mastered it fully, he would have completely overtaken the then, now, forever thing with his own graveyard spiel. Is that supposed to impress me? Call me Shania Twain, because it doesn't much. <laughs> what does impress me, though, is the thought of how much boot polish The Undertaker has put in his hair. Bugger my bum, wasn't that very black on last night's WWE Raw. Too black, some might say. Too black. Sorry, Philadelphia. Really, really sorry to let you down like this, but CM Punk won't be in the women's elimination match at WrestleMania 33. So WTF, with the W meaning Y here, we get chanting his name while the four ladies win the ring, you set of... Bastard bar. Not only is that chant here a WTF moment, you know, because what the f has CM Punk got to do with those ladies? Absolutely nothing. Another WTF moment here is that four women who were in a WWE ring at the same time have never been in a relationship with CM Punk. There's normally always one. The bloody little scamp him. Yeah, he puts his willy anywhere. Next, we move on to Stephanie McMahon and those giant f King lady balls. Oh, I love the balls. And the fact that she claimed that nobody merely inserts themselves into a WrestleMania match, they have to earn it. I'm here at one question. What about Taker and Reigns? Step. I know The Undertaker has earned it because he's been around for bear time, fam. Plus, he loves earns. Earned it. He's a uh, uh, no. But you can't be telling me that Roman has earned his way into this match by continuously failing to get over with the marks. Because he's f***ed that up the arse. The Cadbury Alley. No, you can't tell me he has. Your metaphorical lady ball step should be cremated and hide into an urn of their very own. And then Stephanie McMahon had the lady balls to book Kevin Owens versus Sami Zayn once again. I know, as they always produce those two, it'll be a fantastic match. I know those two hit the headlines over the weekend for their emotional interaction at that house show in Montreal. But f*** me sideways and call me Betty, lads. If this is an example of New Era same old shit, I do not know what is not is, is, is. Is I I remember when Sami Zayn versus Kevin Owens at Battleground was the last time they'd ever fight? I fing do what happened to that? <laughs> F that gauntlet shit. This was a battle royal to hype another battle royal. 
What the creative team for WWE Raw are basically saying here is imagine this same match in a slightly different looking ring in a bigger bastard arena and there's Bob's your uncle and Fanny's your aunt. What the f***'s the crap with that? We've seen it on Raw. We're not going to be hyped for it on bloody WrestleMania, are we, you f***? Mags. Plus, we found out that both Dallas and Curtis Axel are still employed, so that's a huge, huge, huge WTF moment. Huge. What's the point in Seth Rollins having a crutch if he's able to go bad leg first up the stairs? He can put all his weight on the bad leg to go up the steps. Those crutches are as useful as a cock flavored lollipop. Was I the only one slightly aroused by Daddy Triple H? Him putting down Seth Rollins like a little bad child saying good boy when he sat down? No, just me. Just me, I was aroused. But the point I'm going to make here is about that kinky daddy Triple H. Oh, my oh. Who made the outlandish claim that no man ever who has had one leg has won an ass kicking contest? Ever! He said ever really angrily, didn't he? And that turned me the f on. I'm here to say one thing, pal Triple H, mate. Zach Gowan, he has won literally, literally two WWE matches, with one of them being on Papa Vieux against Matt Hardy before he was broken. So here we have another live from the man who claimed to invent British independent wrestling. <laughs> That's why your schneck's so f***ing big, because you can't stop lying out your arse versus you're the creator of British wrestling. Now you're claiming a one-legged man's never won an arse-kicking contest. Triple H, I've got one thing to say to you, buddy. Suck my cock-flavoured cock. Here is a quote from Daddy Triple H, who bloody hell. Oof. Wow. If everyone doesn't hate you, then you're not living up to your full potential. As we can hear here from that delusional statement, that is WWE explaining the continued bemusing push of Roman Reigns from their own warped perspective. What the f*** is going on there? Guess what I'll be doing when that teed is on the stage at WrestleMania? I'll be necking a couple of pints and then going for a nice long Jimmy Whittle. Piddle. If I hear Mr. Worldwide, while I'm not pointing my Percy at the porcelain, I'll not only push my fingers into my own eyes, I'll also remove the eyes of several people surrounding me. So if you're sat next to me at WrestleMania and you see me in my seat while Pitbull's on, f***ing run. And with the announcement for Pitbull soon after came the announcement that the Cruiserweight have been bumped to the pre-show for WrestleMania. What could be one of the greatest matches of the night has been bumped for the pre-show for some bored knobbies to say some words and not sing. Just say some words like a c***t. That's all he is, just a massive c***t. Pitbull, you're a c***t. <laughs> Here's a direct quote from Roman Reigns. I'm gonna do what no man has ever done before me. Put the Undertaker down. Now just look at that screen up there. When I turn around, my editor, Mr. Hobo Joe, can you f***ing believe it? He's gonna put a picture up there that'll disprove Roman's little statement there. Good work, Hobo Joe. Next, we have another little quote from Roman Reigns, and what a stupid f***ing thing it was to say. Now, it's clear after what's gone on in the past couple of weeks that WWE are trying to brush the whole page situation well under the carpet, so nobody will ever hear of it again. Yeah. How do we know they're doing this? Well, they're having the New Day appear backstage. They're not sending them out in front of a live audience because they know what chance will ensue when they're in front of a live audience. However, they have Roman Steel page Wagey Wagey's biggest catchphrase, this is my house. If that's not gonna trigger the Dirty Mark's memories, then I don't know what will. They've just forgotten about Paige and what happened, and then Roman's like, this is my house now, and now they're all reminded of what went down. Here we have an example of WWE's creative team who more than likely wrote that for Roman, f***ing Roman, who in turn, then WWE, just as good as Hey Roman, hey boo. Hey Roman, how big do you reckon Vince McMahon likes his big sweaty men? I don't know, hun. How big does Vince McMahon like his big sweaty men? This big. Undertaker does the gardening in his UFC gloves. <laughs> Another direct quote from last night's episode, and this time Mr. Byron Saxton, who said, Yo, guys, we learned that ladders are very dangerous. And to round things off on this very weird, yes, just remember that somebody asked me to propose their girlfriend for them. Just remember that. Don't forget that. Just remember that. 
we round things off with Corey Graves, who claimed that Kevin Owens could end the career of two pals in a matter of days. This is despite the fact that KO himself, in an interview moments prior, clarified that Chris Jericho was never ever his pal, just his bitch, who he used to keep the Universal Championship around his lovely rotund belly. Why the f don't people get this first year chest and chaplain, you know, that little interviewee saying that to KO and then she passed that on to Corey Graves who said it in front of the world after Kevin Owens clarified the situation for him. What the f*** is going on? It's not that hard to understand, surely. <laughs> not as hard as understanding the psyche behind a man asking this thing. A non-stressed up in a cape and crown to ask his girlfriend, his real-life girlfriend, to marry him. Bugger my bum. Bye-bye.